All right, let's take a look at problem number two. Given 2x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 2x squared minus 21x minus 12 equals 0, first, what are the possible rational roots? So again, we're being asked to come up with a list of p over q's. So first we list the possible p's, the factors of negative 12. Well, we've got 1 and 12, we've got 2 and 6, and we've got 3 and 4. Those are all the factors of 12. For q's, um, I'm looking at the possible factors of 2. So that's plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So since I have more than just plus or minus 1 on my list of q's, I am going to have to write out this whole list of possible rational roots, p over q's. So my p over q's, first, everything would be divided by 1. So that's just my list of p's. So I've got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 12, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 4. But I also have each of those things divided by 2. Well, 1 divided by 2 is a half, so I have plus or minus a half. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and I already have plus or minus 6 on my list, so I don't need to do that again. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and I already have plus or minus 1 on my list. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I already have plus or minus 3 on my list. 3 minus 2 is 3 halves, though. I don't already have plus or minus 3 halves, so I need to add that. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's already on my list, so there's my list of possible rational roots. That's a lot of numbers to have to try, which is why we're really happy about that little cheat of going to our graphing calculator when the next question asks us, all right, what are the actual rational roots? We know if there are any, they have to be on that list, but without the little cheat, we're kind of blind as to what it could be. So let's go ahead and we'll look at our graphing calculator. And we'll clear out the work from the previous problem, just like we did before, and we're going to put in 2x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 2x squared minus 21x, minus 12. And we're going to stick with Zoom Standard because we don't know what a good window is going to be. And we see what happens. All right. Now, my only caution would be that it could go out as far as 12, and I can't see to negative 12 and positive 12. So I think I would zoom out just a little bit further. I'm going to let it go to like, negative 13 and positive 13 so that if it's crossing way out there I'll see that although I suspect that it's not yep I only see two possible real roots here there's something happening between negative 1 and 0 and it looks like there's something happening at 4 so when I'm thinking of my sketch I might want to zoom out and get a better picture um, but I basically know it's coming down here, something's happening, and it's coming back up. It looks like this is between negative 1 and 0, and it looks like this might be at 4. So I'm going to start with 4, uh, because starting with my easiest integers is the easiest place to begin for my synthetic division. So doing my synthetic division... I can see that I do get a remainder of 0, so I have confirmed that x equals 4 is in fact one of my rational roots. Now, there are a lot of other possibilities, and I still have a fairly large polynomial in here. So I'm going to take a look and see, all right, I need something between negative 1 and 0. And as I look through my list, the only thing between negative 1 and 0 is negative 1 half. And we know we don't do synthetic division with fractions. So if I'm thinking about this, if x could maybe equal negative 1 half, if I multiply both sides by 2, I get 2x equals negative 1, and solving for 0, I have 2x plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to try long division with 2x plus 1. So I'm going to take 2x plus 1, and I'm going to divide it into this remaining polynomial. So if this is constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, this is 2x cubed plus x squared plus 6x plus 3. So 2x goes into 2x cubed. I would need an x squared to multiply with that. 
So that gives me 2x cubed plus x squared, and I'm subtracting all of that. That all completely cancels out, so I'm going to bring down this 6x, um, and I'm going to bring down the plus 3, because I'm going to get a binomial. So to get 2x to turn into 6x, that would add a 3. So 6x plus 3, if I subtract this, I get a remainder of 0. So I've confirmed that x equals negative half is also an actual rational root. Notice the remaining factor is x squared plus 3, and that wouldn't be factorable. I also don't have any more x-intercepts. I don't have any bounces that create a multiplicity. So I have found all of the rational roots. The factored form of the function uses each of my rational roots to create a factor and the factor that we found through long division. So that's the factored form of this function. I can find the imaginary roots from that leftover factor that couldn't be factored any further using the zero product property and solving by taking square roots. Notice when I take square roots this time, I get plus or minus i root 3, because when I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to generate an imaginary number.